Hey there, what's going on? My name is Steve, and this is my racing game development log. So, we're on log number 30, and at this point I've basically finished blocking out my open world. I, I went through and I set up all of the streetlights for the open world, so now it just anywhere we drive, there's these interactive streetlights that we can drive into and, and knock over, which is kind of cool. And they also provide a, a really nice ambient feel. So, like, the game was just kind of dull before this. Um, but now it, it feels like it brings the streets more to life and... Yeah, I, I'm I'm really happy to have them in here. There's a lot more work I need to do with level design, a lot more props I need to get into the scene, and I I still want to make the drivable area a little bit bigger for the player. Um, but anyway, so so I'm happy that I have the street lights up. That's kind of a milestone for me. They're up. They're pretty optimized, and yeah. So that flickering is from the scene's directional light. I think I need to create a separate one just for the terrain because it it needs a specific bias value that changes the way the shadows look for all of the other objects. So um, anyway. So yeah, that, that's where I am level design-wise. And the, the other thing that I worked on was improving the player controller and also starting to implement CinemaChine. So somebody was asking on the forum about whether or not I was... Well, he, he just basically asked me, what's up with CinemaChine? Have you seen that latest Unite talk? And yeah, the CinemaChine is awesome. They, they do a lot of cool things, and they allow you to have some really great properties built into the camera directly. Well, it's not really the camera. It's a camera... I don't know how to explain it. It's like a really high-powered camera controller that is just built into Unity. So rather than using my camera controller script, what I did was I created four Cinemachine virtual cameras, and I'm only really using two of them right now. Um, and each of them are for a specific state, and, and what happens is they all get blended together based on different input that's being provided by the user for the car controller. And they're also reading some of the car controller values. So, so that said, that's, that's basically what's going on. Um, what I'm, what I'm doing is I'm playing this game with an Xbox controller. When I publish this game, it'll have support for an Xbox one controller and a PlayStation four controller. Um, I don't know if I'll do a steering wheel, probably not, um, just because I don't have one and I, I don't really want to go and spend a bunch of money to do that. But, but anyway, so with the controller, what's really important to me. So as I'm developing this game, I'm, I'm constantly playing it on a controller. And what's important is that all of the buttons feel good and they feel like there's a reason for me to press them. So right trigger is throttle, left trigger is brake. Um, what is that? A is nitro and X is, I, I don't even think you could see what I'm showing you. Anyway, X is emergency brake and A is nitro. Um, y is enter camera and B is rear view camera. Y and B are, those cameras are going to change. Those are different cameras and that's why they look bad right now. I don't even know if we're going to go inside the vehicle for this game. We'll see. Um, so the way that I'm using this controller is when you're driving fast and well, when you're driving and you let go of the trigger, the car slows down. It, it basically has drag added, angular and regular drag. Um, and it just basically slows the car down. So the car can, will just 
come to a complete stop if you let go of the accelerator. So the, the reason that I have that is so that, like, let's say you're driving, no matter what you're doing, you want to aim for a specific lane. Um, by letting go of the throttle, you're able to kind of regain control of your car. Um, so if you want to stay in the left lane and drive very fast, you basically just tap the throttle and release it. Um, so you hold it while you're driving, and then if you want to change lanes, for example, you could just release the throttle and um, have an easier time navigating your car and regaining control. Uh, so there's there's a purpose to the way that you use the throttle. So the other thing that I added today was with the cinema machine. Um, well, I, I did something with the input and with the cinema machine. So the first thing that I did, you might have noticed that I made the car take a sharper turn. So while I'm holding the the skid button, the emergency brake, which is X, the car does a skid, and that allows me to do a U-turn while I'm on the road. Um, so if I try to do a U-turn without doing that, even if I let go of the throttle, you could see that I'm just like, it, it's, it's not really hard. It's kind of, or it's not really easy. And you, you do a really wide turn. Um, wow. That was kind of interesting. Um, yeah. Anyway, doing, it, it's not predictable what's going to happen and it doesn't feel cool. Um, which I think is the most important. So if I want to do a U-turn, now I just hit the X and hold it until I got a, a turn done. And I let go of the throttle and I could make sure that I regain control of my car and end up in the lane that I want to drive in. And what I did with Cine Machine for this like skid turn, sharp turn, it's not really drifting. I, I'm not focused on getting drifting. What I'm focused on is getting a fun to drive car that, that can basically control the way that you want to. It can turn on a dime if it needs to, and then the player can regain control and then go really fast if they need to. Um, that that's what's important to me. So with Cine Machine, what what I'm doing in this state, which is I'm I'm making it so that there's more there's a higher yaw value for the body as the car is basically skidding. Um, so when the car is not skidding, you can see that that value is is clamped a lot more and I, th I think that basically combining those values together it, it helps make the car feel interesting and fun and it also serves a purpose so it's not like I'm just layering effects together just to do them you want to set up the right camera properties for each state so what I have now is I have I have this slow state, which gets that camera pull back, and I need to increase the speed at which it stops pulling back. And then I need to configure some more interesting behaviors for this go fast state. And then the skid state feels pretty good. So the slow speed and the skid speed feel good. I need to do something for the nitro state right now that's just that, that's not even blending into anything. There's some logic that's set up to do it, but um, I don't have any transition effects or anything, and that camera's just not being blended. Um, but yeah, so th so those are the states: slow, skid, nitro, and go fast. And it, I've only put in a couple hours worth of work playing with Cine Machine and so far, I feel like it's going pretty well. Um, 
still looking forward to setting up some AI in this world. That's probably it's probably what I want to do the most. But I I think I'm also going to play with Cinemachine more. I don't know which one I'm going to do next. But anyway, thanks for checking this out. Um, hope it was interesting for you to hear about what I'm thinking about doing for my player controller. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.